Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to show you how to project texture onto an animated geometry. So for the for the common uh, projection setup, it'll look something like this, right? You'll have your geometry, you'll have your camera, and then the camera is essentially just shooting texture at the at the geometry, right? So a setup for something like that would look like you have your geometry, which ignore the animated here because I've added a frame hold, right? And then we have our camera, which is animating. In this case, I'm, my camera is moving from left to right. And then we have our texture that we want to project, which will always go through Project 3D. And we always frame hold by that frame that we want to make sure that the projection is happening on. So this is the setup for uh, for a projection that only where only the camera moves, right? So if we if we look at the result here, then what will happen is that our camera is moving, you know, to the sides, and then we have our sphere with our texture that is also animated because I've, I've gone ahead and had a transform to that uh, texture and it's sticking correctly. Why? It's very easy because the sphere is actually st static in space. But what happens if I get rid of this frame hold here? So if I if I just delete the frame hold and I, and I look at the animation of my sphere, um, if I look here, right, you'll see the, end, the the sphere is moving and rotating all over the place, right? So what happens when it goes through and tries to apply the, te the texture uh, once it's animated? So if we if we look at the result here, what's happening is that yes, we've we've set up our projection, but because it's not only the camera that's moving, but the geometry itself, you know, the the texture isn't really sticking to it. So so how do how do we solve this? Um, so a couple a couple of things to take note here. So in, in this example, I am using uh, an animated texture, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, not only for you to have the option, but there will be two setups to the solution to the solution, right? So so this is this is the problem. This shows you why you know the the projection just doesn't stick, right? So let's move on to solution number one. Okay, so this setup here only works with static textures, and I'll show you why in a second. And let me just walk you through what you need to build in order to get this working. So uh, you're always going to need a texture, of course, right? And and keep in mind I have that that animating that that transform that is actually animating onto our texture over time, but you'll see why it doesn't work in a Minute. So we have our texture that we want to project. We have our animated geometry, and then how do we set this up? So we have again our animated camera, and we also have our project 3D. So same deal, right, as before, except now we really don't want to put the frame hold here because you, you, we saw before that that just doesn't, doesn't solve the problem, right? So we our camera pipes in, it goes into the project 3D, and then we are going to apply this projection with an apply material node. Right, so we have our sphere here that's going through the apply material, and that uh, it's going to, you know, inherit that uh, projection and apply it to to the sphere. So once that's happened, that's where you want to frame hold, right? So once those two things marry, that's where you want to frame hold, and that's why this setup right here does not work with animations in the texture, right? So because everything goes through a frame hold. You know, th this transform is basically non existent, or it will just take into account whatever frame we are referencing here. So uh, just keep that in mind, right? So for the setup, keep in mind strictly for static textures. Um, and then, so that so once you have that texture here, so if if we look at um, at our result here, what I'm going, what I'm what I'm uh, piping this into is a scanline render that is actually set to uh, UV mode, right? So make sure that the projection mode is set to UV. That's very important. And the other thing that's very important is that you make sure that the resolution that you you connect to that scanline render is actually a square resolution. So the reason why we want to do that is because we're we're basically building a texture that we're then going to attach to the moving um, to the moving uh, geometry, right? The, the moving geometry we have some from before. So what I've added here is, you know, essentially just make sure that your reformat is set to a square resolution. So I have mine here set to square 1K. And then I've just added a resolution multiplier down here, which is just a, um, uh, reformat set to scale, and then you can just change the scale to you know one, two, three, four, whatever it is, just so that uh, you can just control how, whatever resolution uh, this changes to. And you'll see why that is relevant in a moment. And I've I've added a few stickies here and there for for you to reference. And you know, like always, I'll be sharing this uh, this script for you, so you can just you know download it and 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 test it yourself. So we can keep this off for for the moment. Um, so yes, very important that our scanline render is set to UV. 
and that our resolution is set to a square resolution. Keep in mind that, uh, actually, this is not relevant for this one, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Just uh, Actually, I'm going to change this to, there you go. So the 32-bit is not relevant to this example. So, okay, so we are basically building a texture for our sphere, right? So that's why it's it should be nice and square. And then that uh, texture that we'll build, we're building, uh, we can just go through and apply material and apply it to our animated geometry. So if we look at this apply material now, and let me go ahead and turn off the wireframe. So we just can take a look at the texture result, right? So if I if we look at that now, if I play this back, if we let it cache for a moment, if it'll do it, there you go. So we see now that our texture is, you know, flying in space and it is attaching correctly to the to the animated geometry, regardless of what's happening with the camera, regardless of what's happening with the geometry itself, right? So it's it's sticking correctly. So why have I added the the uh, resolution multiplier here? So we there are two things that, that are going to drive the quality of your texture, right? So of course, the texture is very important. If you have a low res texture, you know, there's only so much you can do. But if you have an, uh, you know, if you have something that's going to be uh, bigger than you need, then you you always get a sharp texture. However, it doesn't just um, revolve around the resolution of your texture here, because if you're if you're making the texture itself pretty small, right? So if we look at, again, we're looking at our output from the scanline render here. And in this example, I have this set to HD. So you see our our text is maybe not the best quality here. And that might be because the texture we're building is only 1K, right? So this is a 1K square. So I'm gonna go back here to my scanline render. If I, if I change this uh, to a square 512, right? Then you'll see it gets even worse. So regardless of how good your texture is up here keep in mind that this is also relevant for you to getting the best quality textures that you can so again i'm gonna just set that back to square 1k and that's why i've added that that resolution multiplier so you can just come here and if we leave it at one it's not really doing anything and then if i just go to two you see it just starts getting sharper and sharper until we get diminishing returns so after i think scale three between three and four I really don't see a difference. So that's why that's there. So at, at the end of the day, this is going to be a 3K texture instead of the original 1K texture that we had, right? So you, you can see here, it's a 3072 by 3072 texture. And that's because the resolution multiplier is bumping it up. So keep that in mind, I mean, you know, keep it on and off depending on what you're connecting. You can always just delete that and just make sure that you change that reformat to a proper resolution, probably 4K or something like that. And then you're you're good to go. So that solves the, if we look now through the scanline render, and if I, if I just play this back, you'll see our uh, animated sphere has the projection working correctly, even even though it's it's moving, right? So that's how you would set it up for, um, for a piece of geometry that is animating, but you cannot, again, you cannot attach uh, moving textures to it. So uh, because it goes through that frame hold here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this transform just so that when you download the script, it's not um, it's not confusing you. So there you have it. So that's the solution for the static texture. So the next solution is how do we make this work for an animated texture, right? Because we saw before, because we go through that frame hold, then our texture just gets frozen, right? So the the key difference here is that instead of piping in the texture like we, like we were before, so you can see our, our uh, color wheel is actually being applied here at the texture space. Uh, we are now actually applying an ST map instead of a texture, right? So keep in mind that the ST map, and this is uh, again because I'm going to be sharing the script, you can just check here. But this is how you. This is one of the ways of, of building an ST map image, right? And then the resolution of that ST map is going to be driven by the reformat that's connected to it. So just make sure that whatever um, whatever texture you want to be driving, the resolution of the ST map is enough to hold it, right? So in that case, uh, I've just had it at 4K just because it's, it's you know, pretty straightforward. Just leave it at that value for me. And then setup is the same. So we have our camera that goes through the project 3D, but now instead of the texture, we have an ST map texture that's going to be uh, applied here. And then, um, and then that goes into the apply material. So we have our sphere then being applied the projection of the ST map, and then that gets frame hold, right? So that goes through a frame hold. So now the, uh, 
the frame hold is not affecting our texture because you see our texture is nowhere to be seen from the frame hold up, right? So now because everything's been driven through the ST map, our texture should be, in theory, should be safe from uh, from being frozen uh, in the animation. So, okay, so we have our frame hold. We've now applied our ST map. So what happens next? So same, same deal as before, right? Um, we go into a scanline render that's been set to UV. So that's very important. And then also very important is that the resolution of that um, of that texture is also set to to a square resolution, right? Which is why I've added this here. Make sure it's square. And because this time we're rendering as Tmap instead of just a normal uh, uh, texture, make sure that it is 32 uh, a 32-bit image, right? So make sure it's a 32-bit image with no compression, just so you can you don't get any issues. And same deal with the multiplier. If 1K is enough, you can just you know bump it up to whatever it is you need. So again, important that it's square. Important that it's 32-bit. So next, how how do we apply our texture to our ST map? So now we have this driving our, um, it's going to be sticking to our sphere. So now we can bring in our animated texture. And then we have, again, we have our animation to it. So it's spinning. And now we can just go ahead and add an ST map node and make sure the ST map node is set to RGB. That's very, very important so that it reads the, uh, the UV information and then applies that texture correctly. So we have, you see, we have a few issues here and that, that'll be solved in a moment. I'll show you how. Um, so now we have our ST map. It's applying our texture correctly. So if we if we go ahead and compare it with the static one, you see it looks basically the same, right? So it's splitting the sphere right there in the middle. So okay, we have our ST map, and now the result from this ST map, that's what we connect to our apply material. So now we have our sphere going into the apply material, and that material gets applied after it's been gone. It's gone through through, through the ST map. So if we look at the scanline render here, right? If I just play this back, you'll see. We have our texture, it's spinning, and it's attaching correctly to our animated sphere and our moving camera. So, okay, we have a bit of an issue here, a bit of a resolution thing that we were talking about in, in the previous example. So how do we solve this, right? Not only the, the funky lines that are happening in, back here, um, but also our text, if I compare the, so the, the output of our scanline render, uh, with the old one, you see our text is much sharper on this version, right? So, okay, so let's go to uh, one of the places that we know can help, and that's going to be our resolution multiplier. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it up, turn it on, and you see nothing really happens or, or, or very little happens, right? So it, it does get a bit better, but nothing nothing too crazy, especially considering we're bumping it up by a value of four. So in this case, because of the way this is built and the way you know these these um, the, the image is being treated, we need an extra step. So we have our texture, which if we look at here, right? If I if I look at the output here from our animate texture up to the transform, uh, let me zoom out here, and then you see this is a square 512 512 image. And if I go to our static texture, just so you can see this is exactly the same, we see again that this is also a 512 by 512. So um, but again, because of the way this is all piped, we need to, you know, cheat and and kind of bump it up. So I've added the sticky for you here. And again, this is just another reformat that is also set to be a multiplier. So I've set a scale to four. Again, you can just start at one, and then you can just bump it up to whatever you see fit. So if I go to my scanline render now, right, and I just zoom in here a bit, and I turn on my resolution multiplier here, and I just say. Uh, start at one, and then we go to two, to three, to four. You see, it starts getting sharper. So, in in this second setup, you have there's a few a, an extra place where you have to check that resolutions are as good as they can be, so that your texture is as sharp as it can be. So it's going to be the ST map resolution. It's going to be the scanline render that produces that UV. Uh, texture, so that that resolution multiplier, and then also for this one as an extra, it's going to be this reformat here, which is also a multiplier. Uh, so now that we have that there, if we compare the output of this one versus a static one, we see the quality is basically the same. So again, you can just you know fiddle that depending on. Uh, on, on, on your comp, depending on the resolution of, of whatever output you're trying to achieve. And then that should kind of do it. So now, again, it, with, our, with our, our sharp texture, you see it's still working as expected, even though the resolutions change. It's just you know, the, the way it's, it's working in the background. So hopefully this helps you. I know this is a, this is a common question. And uh, uh, I've, 
yeah, it's just it's just something that makes your life easy. And sometimes, you know, uh, newer people don't know that this is possible. They just think, oh, the, the projection's not sticking. Like, what can I do? So it's actually uh, simple once you have it. So you can just go ahead and save it and keep it in your tool set for the future. So, all right, I'll see you next time. Cheers.